all right so let's start the class <clears throat> so first we'll be understanding what is data what is database and what sql is all about so just maybe 20 25 minutes and then we'll straight away move to sql workbench okay so firstly what is data data is anything which is any information that you get right now information can be of two types or maybe of multiple types first of all data that we get right that's in always in its raw form we get raw database right for example if i tell you the tweets people are posting some tweets on twitter or maybe the messages which you share or maybe in your uh, google uh, whatever searches you make all these are data which is captured when you draw some inferences from this data this becomes an information right so very basic the raw data we convert it into a particular form and then we use it as a information so any facts and figures or an information corrected for future analysis is known as data right so data can be in multiple forms it can be in text it can be in audio video and so on right so what is database that is what is we'll be uh, dealing with so database is basically a collection of all the data which has been collected in a very logical manner so for example i tell you i have data of all the students does it make any sense if i tell you that i have taken all the data together of all the students i have put it in one place i have the roll number of the students i have the names i have the email id their address so i have put it in a particular table format tab tabular format and that is one table that i have created for the students so for example consider a college a university so what they'll have they'll have a database for all they'll have a table for all the students then they'll have a table for all the books maybe that is there in the library a table for all the teachers a table for all the subjects so they'll be having these different tables together it forms a database for the institute correct so for for example if you take up any startup right any any company so they'll have a sales data what all sales they are making on a daily basis just imagine a spencer or a big bazaar they'll have one customer base wherein they ask you do you do you have uh, maybe shop a stop card do you have pantaloons card right they ask you their your numbers so they, that is your customers database that they maintain right then they have the purchases that they make so similarly all these together they form a database that is what we'll be dealing with in sql how to manipulate how to create how to use a database in sql now another database uh, base management system dbms you might have heard this a lot dbms so dbms is basically a software which is used for storing transforming retrieving manipulating all the database now it can be in multiple forms we have oracle we have mysql so similarly we have different softwares provided we'll be using mysql why because first of all it's very user friendly secondly and most importantly it is free you don't have to pay for it you can download you can use it right and thirdly it's very transparent so all these advantages are there and so that is why we'll be using but whatever codes that we are learning in my sql workbench you all can apply similar codes to maybe ms access or to maybe uh, oracle right the codes are almost similar it's a little bit different but then obviously once you have learned my sql you can apply the same codes else elsewhere now next let us understand what are the major characteristics of a dbms these are very important we will just quickly go through these why because we need to understand what a software needs to have for a good database management right firstly it is it deals with data integrity this is something which is really talked about so if you all uh, data protection data integrity is an uh, is an upcoming sector if you uh, maybe it's basically related to risk management if you are losing your data if your confidential data is passed on to your competitor right so it can cause a very large financial risk to your company so all these sectors are very upcoming so that is why you need to understand what are the different characteristics you a database management software should have so that you can implement it or use it in your company so these are few characteristics first is data integrity so it should be 
protected from any unauthorized access for example we in a very small scale we have something called as google drive that stores our data right so you how your google drive if suppose you are communicating to someone who is outside of your organization you generally get a pop up that this is outside of your organization do you still want to share your information right so these are small things which will provide your data from unauthorized access second is data persistency which is persistence which is basically any data stored in the database management system that cannot be lost right for example i'm storing a data 10 years back i need it right now i can retrieve it using the software so that consistency that persistency should be there in my database next is support acid properties acid is the uh, short form for accuracy completeness isolation and durability so basically when you say it completes the software should be complete as a whole which should provide you a place uh, to store all your real life data sets and give you real life properties real world properties to manipulate your data then you have backup and recovery something which is very 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 important if i am working on my sql and for example there is a power failure right so everything gets sh sh shuts down but it gets stored so you can once you your power is back you can use it from wherever you started um next is it should be realistic it should be real world uh, the architecture of the entire software should be constructed in a particular way that you can use all the real life data sets what we'll be doing today uh, you'll you'll be able to use a very large data set and you'll be able to understand how my sql is formed in such a way that we can actually use all the real life entities which are there all right next uh, next it allows the users many users to access the same database at one time for example there is a database for example i was talking about the university database there will be multiple teachers who are working right so not one teacher for the greatest example which i can take is for example you are booking a airline ticket or a railway ticket many a times what happens suppose i have just selected one ticket and you just go on to the last payment stage and it will show you the ticket has been booked so maybe someone else is booking the same ticket it happens on the real time right multiple people are booking the same maybe the same airline the same railway at the same time right so in just seconds your slot is has been booked by someone else so that is what is all about it you concurrent access it allows multiple users to use the same thing on a real time so this is something then you have security so your data should provide security from different uh, users then redun reduces redundancy this is something which is very important why because we have very large data set right so um, many a times there is a lot of duplicacy in our data so how to reduce that duplicates that also we'll see how it becomes very simple using mysql so now let us quickly understand what are the various terminologies these are very simple i've just taken a few terminologies over here as we move ahead i'll be using more such such terms because when we are talking in terms of mysql we should understand the basic terminologies and we should talk in that terms right so first is entity entity is something which you can recognize it's identifiable for example i tell you a student a student is identifiable right a teacher is identifiable you can identify a teacher by name by maybe the course he or she is teaching similarly you can identify a school a college so anything which can be identified is a entity anything can be an ident uh, entity next is the relation so when i am talking about data table right you have columns you have rows these are the columns and these are the rows so that is your call uh, that is called as a relation in sql terms we call it relation then we have a table so table is again a collection of rows and um columns attribute attribute are the fields or the columns for example i am making a students table i have roll number i have name i have email id all these are attributes of a particular entity student okay then we have tuple or rows so for one particular student what is the roll number the name the email id the class and so that entire thing is known as a tuple 
in SQL. So these are the different terminologies. Now we are actually moving into the technical aspect. This is what we will be making in SQL. So for example, when you make different tables, right, when you make different tables, we will be constructing these tables. These all tables that we are making should be interlinked to each other. For example, a student's table should be interlinked to the different exams which are happening or different subjects or maybe let us consider a very very small store a store they have a customers table okay they have a sales table they have a purchases table so the customers table should be linked to the sales table right the sales table should be linked to the purchases table the purchases which i'm making so similarly we'll understand how we can link or join these different tables right so there are different constraints which are imposed when you create a table or when you join these tables which we can do using the keys in DBMS you might have heard this if you have done MS access somewhere so we have primary key we have foreign key these two are the most important keys that we'll be using and then we have alternate key uh, we have candidate key, composite key, unique key and so so on and so forth. So first of all, what is a primary key? So let's not read this. Let's understand by using this particular table that we have. So <clears throat> this is a table where I've ta taken student ID. I've taken the roll number. I've taken the first name, last name and email ID. Now a primary key should be a key which has unique values. That is the first thing. It should have unique values. Secondly, it should be identifiable in a particular table. You can identify a table using a primary key, right? So in this particular table, what all can have unique values? Can first name has uni have unique values? No, we can have three people with the same name. We can have three people with same last name. But can we have people with same uh, student ID? No, not possible. Can we have people, we, we have students with the same roll number? Not possible. Can we have people with same email ID? Not possible. So these three can be unique, uniquely identifiable. Yes. So these three can be candidate keys. What is a candidate key? A candidate key is basically the keys which you can use for a prime as a primary key. Understood? Any key which you can use as a primary key. These three are the keys which I can use as a primary key. But I have decided that I will use the student ID as my primary key for this table. Now one table can have only, only one primary key. One table can have only one primary key, not more than that. So I have decided to go with student ID. But the other two columns will be taken as alternate keys because I haven't selected them. They were all candidate keys. So they make your alternate key, right? So now let us quickly understand what do you mean by a primary key? A column whose value exists, it cannot be null. You cannot have a blank space in your student ID, right? You cannot have a blank space. You can have a blank space in email. Maybe the student hasn't provided with a email can happen but you cannot have a blank space for student ID so and the next thing it should be unique for each and every record right so each table can have only one primary key you cannot have more than one primary key it cannot contain null values and it should be uniquely identified for a particular table student ID means I am creating a students table right so that is what is a primary key all about we'll be seeing that how we can create this in sql next is a composite key so what is composite key if you are make, using two if you are using two columns or attributes to make a single primary key we can do that so for example i'm using name and address to make a primary key we called it call it as a composite key generally this is not uh, something that we do in uh, real life but 
in extreme situations if we want to we can make two columns two or more columns as a primary key we can combine it and make a primary key it's called as a composite key next we have the foreign key very very important relation please understand using this table because we'll be constructing this straight away we'll not be able to visualize we'll just straight away construct it in sql so here suppose i have two tables i have my customers table i have my orders table in the customers table i have customer name uh, first name i have last name oh my arrows are not there okay wait you all can see this now abhi okay so for example this is my customers table i have my customer number first name and last name here i have the orders table all these different columns are there now we have a customer number in the customer table for example um i have 10 students okay let's consider this institute i have 10 students so in my customers table i'll be having in my students table i'll be having 10 students now one student can purchase more than one course right right so in my orders table i'll be having the same student twice or thrice if they have made two or more purchases right so that is what is happening over here for example here we see that we have customer number 1 <clears throat> now the same customer can order more than once as well so there will be in this particular orders table we will be having the same customer number 1 may be repeated twice or thrice but this is this should not be the case for a primary key in a primary key the numbers can only repeat once it cannot repeat basically it should be only there once it cannot repeat itself so here in this table i have decided to go with customers number as the primary key this is my primary key all right this is my primary key in the orders table obviously the order number cannot be same neither it can be null right so this i have decided as a primary key for the orders table now how to link how to link these two tables so here we have the customers number here we have the customers number so i can use this column as the linkage between the two tables right here this customer number is the primary key when i'm linking the two tables using customer number then the customer number over here in this table will be called as a foreign key a a particular column a particular attribute which you use to combine or you or just maybe use two tables together to link two tables together to create a relation this is what you call a relation between the two tables then this particular column is called as a foreign key in the orders table and this customer number is called as a primary this is as it is taken as a primary key this is taken as a primary key we cannot have more than one primary key in a particular table so what is this customer number this is a foreign key in this orders table understood now one more thing uh, this is if i say that the customer number in my orders table is a foreign key if i say that this customer number is a foreign key in my orders table so it can repeat values that's possible we can have null values blank values in this table for customer number it's possible because it's not a primary key in this table it's a foreign key right another thing which is very very important is that if i delete any particular row from here for example i delete customer number 2 from my customers table if i delete the second column or maybe the customer number 2 from my customers table i want all the rows which are related to customer number 2 in the orders table to be deleted is it possible yes automatically it will be deleted we'll see how we can do that in sql so that is why this is known as a foreign key now foreign key has a parent table and a child table what is a parent table this is the parent table this is the parent table and this is the child table this is a foreign key for orders table but it is related to what it is related to the customers table got it the foreign key and primary key this is very important because these two are the most important keys that we'll be constructing now 
uh, one very uh, important thing which students generally confuse themselves with is why prime if we have a unique key then why do we construct a primary key we have unique key separately we have primary key separately we can create a particular column i can make so for example this is mobile number right can two people have same mobile number no so this has to be unique this column has to be unique so why i'm not making this particular column as my primary key maybe because i've uh, used row number for my primary key why i'm not making this as my primary key no that is not the reason why this is not a i'm using row number as the primary key i'm not using mobile number why yes it can have null values i can have someone maybe is not willing to give me share the mobile number with me right so i can have null values over here but all the values will be unique so this is a unique key but not a primary key as per to my requirement it's all about what you want for your database so let's understand what is the difference primary key cannot have a null value but this can have a null null means blank value unique key can have an email id column can have blank values but it cannot have duplicate values right so it's taken as a unique key not a primary key so number of key in a particular table we can just have one particular primary key but in a particular table we can have more than one primary key got it all right so next let us understand the relation between two tables how to create relations and what are the different types of relation we can create for two tables so we have sales table we have customers table all right so for example if i say i've i've already explained this concept customers i will have 10 customers but each customer can make two sales right they can make two purchases maybe they are coming today and after 10 days they are coming back for a repurchase so in the sales uh table i can have more than this customer id can repeat more than once so that is why i have written fk over here this is how you represent a database this is how we represent a database relation what we do is we make a box we write all the column num column names and this is the table name customers sales and you highlight the primary key in bold and you underline it and for a foreign key we write fk for a foreign key we write fk so here my customer id is the primary key here purchase number is the primary key but we also have a customer id over here so we can create a relation between these two tables so customer id becomes a foreign key what is the par parent table over here customers is the parent table and this is the child table now what can be the relation between the two tables so one customer id here can have multiple sales so there is a one to many relation one to many relation okay this is one to many but many customers suppose if i say um, i have repeated customer id 2 2 2 3 times but here we can just have customer number 2 once so we have a many to one relation in this way so this is one to many and this is many to one clear here i can have for example here when i was explaining in my customer number i can have this customer number one i can repeat see here 112 has been repeated twice 42 is repeated twice but here can i have the customer number repeated twice no this is the customer this is the primary key so what is the relation when i go from here to here many to one this is the many to one relation all right understood we have one to one many to one and so on and we also have many to many relation as well which we'll see later on so now this was a technical aspect very important to understand what is a primary key and what is a foreign key and what is a unique key now we'll be constructing all these in our sql before that why do we uh, use sql because it's a very simple query whatever codes that we run we generally call it as query in sql we don't refer it to as code we call it as query so that is why you will be uh, i'll be talking only about queries run this query run that query so sql is a database query language 
it's used to basically to store manipulate data and um, all the other software which are available in market is ms access oracle um sys uh, sibase we have sql server i'll be using sql workbench many people use sql server it's almost same so all these are there i'll be using mysql because it's an open source it's free and it's reliable it's mature and it's very simple to use right so now let us first quickly understand the interface of how mysql looks like so i hope all of you have installed and downloaded you just have to type mysql or maybe you have to type workbench and this is what will open up this is the mysql workbench or you can say this is a very uh, this is a ide integrated development environment instead of working on the server which has a complete black screen we'll be working on this workbench which is very interactive comparatively interactive okay so when i click on this it might ask you for the password so for me i have just set it in a way that it will not ask me the password again and again i hope all of you remember your passwords and you all can open up first wale click on this local instance click on this ठीक है बता रहे आई एल एक्सप्लेन ये करो इन ऑल राइट सो वेन आई क्लिक ऑन दिस द टैब ओपन अप ओवर ह्योर द टैब ओपन अप ओवर ह्योर दिस इज हाउ योर स्क्रीन शुड लुक लाइक आई होप यू गेट दिस ऑल ऑफ यू राइट now here we have these navigation tools over here so we have you can just click on this your navigator tab closes you can click this is the action output so in whenever i am running a query it shows that how much time the query has taken to run and all these things you can get over here so i can remove sorry i can remove this from here and if i don't want this particular sql additions which i will not be using right now so i can just quickly remove this so this is how you can adjust the interface all right this is how you can adjust the interface then here we have different tabs which we'll be using moving ahead uh, we have the nav navigator for you all you all might just see uh, sys sys you all will not see this employees right here um so we'll later on we'll see how we can import and we can create different schemas or different schemas is another name for database right schemas is another name for a database here we'll write all the queries if i want to create different scripts for my queries i can just click on this plus button and you can create a new sql query tab clear this plus button understood if you want to save your work if you want to save your work how you can how can you save it you just have to click on this button save button and it will ask you where do you want to save it and it will be saved as dot sql the extension will be dot sql so these are the basic things that we have understood now let us first start let us first start by creating a database all right so the database that i'll be creating for today will be looking like this we have a sales table we have a customer table we have item table and we have a company table and how it is linked together <coughs> so uh, in the sales table i'll be having purchase number date of purchase customer id and item code these are the columns that i'll be having in this particular table and these are the different column names i have given over here all uh, the bold one is your primary key and these are the foreign keys so you can say the sales table is related to the customer table as well and item table as well so these are known as adjacent tables tables which are related to each other are known as adjacent tables these are called as adjacent tables right but the sales table and the company table 
these two tables are not related directly you can link it through items table it's not related directly so these are non adjacent tables all right these are non adjacent tables understood now let us start by first creating a database in the database we have these four tables clear so how to create a database there is a simple code that we write over here simple create code create create and then you can write create database now sql is case insensitive means if i am writing in small letters or maybe if i am writing in caps lock doesn't matter it's case insensitive doesn't matter if you are using caps lock but again uh, you will be seeing that i'll be using a lot of indentation what is indentation i'll teach you because i believe that whenever you are writing the queries it should look very nice for person who is using it right so i have written create database and then you give the name of the database so for example this entire database is called as sales so let's write sales how to end a query you always end a query with this semicolon you always end a query with this semicolon clear <coughs> password name okay so <clears throat> create database sales once i execute how to execute a code you have to just there are two three ways of executing you can just keep your cursor over here and you can click on control enter the moment i click on control enter you can see you you'll see three types of buttons over here we are getting a, a green tick button which is your code has been executed properly maybe you will get a red code which says there is an error or maybe you will get a um, yellow co uh, yellow code yellow symbol which shows that there is a warning message all right create database sales one row has been affected and here it gives you the duration it took just 0.062 seconds to execute this particular code control enter control enter or you can also click on this button execute statement under the keyboard cursor so wherever your cursor is your statement will be executed if you click on this button please do not click on this button always because this executes everything every code which is there in your script so create database generally many a times what happens is that sometimes your database already exists for example with the name sales there exists one particular database already you may not know it so we also generally write create database if not exists we write if not exists sales this is something that we uh, usually write when we may, if the sales database does not exist then only create it if it exists then don't create another database with the same name all right now <clears throat> once i have executed this particular code how will i understand that the code is running successfully and um, i am getting the output what you can do is here in the schemas section you will see this refresh button just click on this refresh button नीचे आ रहा होगा यू हैव टू क्लिक ऑन द स्कीमाज यू हैव टू क्लिक ऑन द स्कीमाज ओके यू माइट गेट इट योर ओके वंस यू क्लिक ऑन द स्कीमाज यू विल गेट द सेल्स यू माइट नॉट गेट एम्प्लॉज इट्स ओनली देयर इन माई एस क्यू एल वर्क बेंच फॉर यू ऑल इट विल नॉट हैव सो सेल्स यू कैन क्लिक ऑन दिस बटन इन द टेबल्स करेंटली वी डू नॉट हैव एनी टेबल्स बिकॉज वी हैव इन क्रिएटेड एनी टेबल येट ओके हाँ so ji tell me maybe it's here you have to click on this schemas maybe it's in the bottom section now to show all the databases which is present 
all the databases you can just write show databases and control enter so i have all these database currently in my sql workbench there are some database which already exists some pre existing database which is given to you and there are some things which you have created yes harkavil you have to execute it you have to press control enter keep your cursor over here and control enter okay now once you have created the database see whenever i click on show database you have to run this you have to run the code show databases so when you are running when you are running this particular code you get a result grid this is known as a result grid so whatever results whatever things you are executing will be shown over here okay you can just simply click on this cross if you don't want the result grid right now i'll just increase the size of my screen <clears throat> now in order to use this particular database you'll have to click you'll have to use you'll have to write this particular query use use sales okay use sales by running this line by running this code you can your sales because i have multiple databases right i have multiple i have i have employees i have sales so whenever now the next step i have created the database the next step is to create the table so if i'm creating a table you have to tell your mysql for which database you are creating this particular table so by writing this particular query use sales you are guiding mysql that whatever table or whatever codes i write right now will be only for the sales database okay yes harka will tell me and do you see the sales over here by just clicking on this refresh button then you have not executed control enter control plus enter to execute the code or you can click on this button okay so use sales now let's create a table now let's create a first table which is the sales table that we have over here i'll just show you the code how to delete a particular database which has been created so do not run this code but you can write drop drop database sales by running this query or let me just run it by running this query your data base has gone okay so now again i'll just quickly run this to create the database drop database sales and again over here you can write a line drop database if exists like here i've written if not exist create the table create the database here i've written drop database if exists if it does not exist you'll get an error right but if you run this particular code and you write any random for example i'm writing oh employees i have let me write customer customer database which does not exist obviously i do not have any kind of such so they'll not give me an error but they'll give me a warning symbol that this particular database does not exist okay so after this let's move on to create a table let's create a table so we'll create the sales table now how to create the sales table very simple create and then you give instead of database you write table create table and then you give the name aditi please type your uh, whatever query you have please type it in the chat box 
क्रिएट टेबल सेल्स क्या हुआ क्रिएट टेबल सेल्स क्रिएट टेबल सेल्स नाउ द स्क्रीन इज नॉट शेड तुम लोग सब कनेक्ट कर लिए क्या फिर से प्लीज डिस्कनेक्ट Create table sales. Just give me टू minutes. It'll be shared. Um, बंद कर दो उधर से Create table sales. Next thing you have to open this bracket. You can also do it in the same line. It's preferred to do it in the next line. It's doesn't matter wherever you do it. Okay. So now once you have uh, in the bracket, you give all the column names. So what all column names do I need? What all column names do I need? I need purchase number, date of purchase, customer ID, and item code. Generally, what the convention says is that the column name should not have any space in between. So that is why we use underscore. All right. So what I'll write? I'll write purchase number. first bracket purchase number enter uh next we have date of purchase hmm uh no you you should use this underscore instead of now i'm uh, why i'm just creating another line over here you can also put it in one line just give comma and put it in one line but it's always better to move it to the next line right the code looks better this way and then um purchase date of purchase then we have customer id then we have uh item code right just close the bracket and give this semicolon semicolon means your statement has your query has finished okay so once you have written this once you have written this once you have written this statement now don't run this right now you'll have to explain you'll have to explain um what is your primary key what is your foreign key we cannot create right now foreign key we can only create once you have the customer table because you have to explain the child table and the parent table both right so we can create the primary key for now so how to create primary key you just have to write after the purchase number you have to write primary key this is the constraint which you are giving this is the constraint which i am giving the constraint is i am creating a primary key purchase number is my primary key all right okay now what else what else there are a few more constraints which we will put there are a few more constraints which we'll put what to after sales uh, sujith i did not understand your question just type type your code just type your code this is not error once you just type your code after that it will go away ऐसे एंटर कर दो ना नहीं तो क्या जस्ट ओपन द ब्रैकेट ठीक है नाउ यू हैव टू टेल योर माय एस क्यू एल एज टू वॉट दीज पर्टिकुलर कॉलम्स विल कंटेन व्हाट टाइप ऑफ डेटा इट विल कंटेन राइट बिकॉज जस्ट बाय रीडिंग डेट ऑफ परचेज दे विल नॉट अंडरस्टैंड दैट विल बी अ डेट कॉलम 
they will not understand that this will be an integer column. You will have to explain the data type it will contain. So there are multiple data types. Let's just quickly go through all the data types which we have. So first of all, you divide your data into two parts, string and integer or number, not integer, number. So in string data types, we have character, we have variable character. This is how you write it, char. This is the code or the query that we give for a character data and var char for variable character now what is the difference in character the storage is fixed let me just zoom this the storage is fixed for example if i'm writing char 9 so when i write 9 it means that it can contain only up to 9 characters not more than that and it has a fixed storage of 9 it has a fixed storage or size of 9 but you can also have some values which are less than 9 like I've given the example over here okay in variable character what happens for example if I give this 9 it means that it can contain maximum of 9 uh, values but the storage will differ as per to the number or as per to the values you are writing for example here I've written actuators this has 9 characters so the size will be 9 if I've written learn so this has five characters, so the size will be five. In SQL, size will matter a lot when you deal with large data sets, not right now. But when you deal with very large data sets, then obviously your size matters a lot. So it's very important that your data type should be accurate. Clear? If I'm writing, for example, uh, varchar, maybe 500, right? I need an address. Now some people can have 500 letters, some people will only put 20 letters or 20 um, symbols, something like that. So in that sense, it will only store my 20, the size will be only 20, not 500. This is the difference, okay? Character data type is uh, usually when you know you don't bother about the size and maybe it's just very small, you just give char 10, then it doesn't matter right and when the size is of huge concern then you will use variable character we have many integer data types we have tiny int small int all these are the different integer so this is the integer that we will be generally using the size it will take is 4 and this can be the minimum value the minimum value it can if you are see there are two things signed and unsigned not going into too much details right now but if you are if you want negative values the negative value will start from this value and the positive will go up till this value. Okay. If you only deal with positive values, it will go from 0 to something very huge. So generally we talk in terms of integer. You can also have tiny and small and all these different values as well. Um, what are the integer data types in SQL? So here uh, the different uh, types we use uh, the which are float and double generally we use double for double precision for example you have decimal places 10.2 in that case you need double precision so i'll be using double so now i've written over here for a programmer it's very important to use the exact data type because it's very important in terms of size it will take in the terms of storage and in terms of speed Right now, it's for learning purpose, so it doesn't matter. But when we dealing when we deal with very large data sets, then time and storage is of major concern for a particular organization, right? Okay. So these are the useful data sets which mostly we'll be dealing in. These are the different string and date time. Uh, so we'll be dealing with date. We'll also be dealing with date time, varchar. Here we'll be dealing with integer, decimal. So these are the different data types. As we move ahead, you will understand it better. Now, you all tell me, for a purchase number, for a purchase number, it should be of what data type? Integer, very simple. So, I'll just write INT. I'll just write INT. Now, since I have stated this to be a primary key, it's not important, but you also have to write not null. What do you mean by not null? It cannot take null values. Zero is different, null is different. Zero is a value, right? Not null means it cannot take, it cannot have a blank space. And if you're giving a blank space, it will throw an error, right? 
now let's move to date of purchase it will all uh, the what will be the data type date it should be date date of purchase so i'll just write date data type yes primary it self states but this is something which this is a key which you are creating before that you have to give all whatever constraints you feel like you should give it over here if you are not writing not null still it will work but it's always better to first give all the data types and constraints and then identify the primary key and unique key and foreign key okay so this is a better way of writing a particular code okay <clears throat> so i have written date of purchase you can also if you don't want it to be null you can write not null here as well customer id is again a integer i am not writing not null null anything right now because it can take any value um for item code now item code can have numbers can have letters so let me just give var char it up, it's up to you you can also have character and just write char character doesn't matter right and again i am just writing not null all these specification and constraints which i am putting in can differ as to what you want for your data set right this is what i want for my data set if you want that item code generally logically item code cannot be null if you are selling something you cannot sell a blank you, you should have a item code right so that is something i customer id can be null but here uh, by default it will take null values if you are not writing anything all right so this is how we complete a full code you give all the column uh, names and then you give all the constraints and this is the primary key foreign key we cannot create right now because we do not have what we do not have the linked table which is customers and items so when i execute this particular code when i execute okay i have to select use sales see no database selected so i have to you first execute this use sales and then only i can execute this code all right now what has happened in your sql just in the schemas section just click on this refresh and then you have in the tables you have the sales table you have the sales table or just like database you can pass show tables and it will give you all the tables which are there in your sales database so the name of the database is sales the name of the table is also sales it can happen you can have same name for the table and for the database doesn't matter because you might have dropped the table and you might not have created the table again so just run this create database sales again kya aa raha kaun se code mein error aa raha इसमें आया तुम्हारा हैव यू गिवन द कॉमर्स ठीक है आई चेक तुम्हारे में क्या आ रहा है प्लीज ऑल ऑफ यू रन दिस
so basically uh, one thing which is very common which happened with me as well so here you have to give the semicolon for example if i don't give the semicolon and it will show me an error for the next query so make sure you give semicolon at the end of every query that you write okay another thing create table give the name of the table right so these are and also one very interesting thing if you are writing everything in caps make sure everything is in caps or maybe everything is in small letters because that doesn't look good for a anyone who will view your code now they should und understand that okay some particular uh, person who who is a professional profession has written the code aisa nahi hona chahiye ki kuch bhi likh diya theek hai so this is something uh now uh, when i click on the show tables all the tables in the sales databases available there is only one table which we have created now what i want you all to do i'll give you all 5 to 10 minutes all right and you all have to create customers items and company table yes aditi Use where? Ha, we can view them. We'll view them later. See what you can do. So, uh, I've got one question. Please, all of you, <clears throat> I've got, uh, got one question. She wants to view how your sales table is looking like. So, what you can do is, what you can do is, you can just hover over here, and here you get a box with a lightning symbol. Just click on this button. and when i click on this button i will and i will explain this code in the next class so just see how it looks like you have purchase number date of purchase customer id and item code i have just created the table but i haven't created any values right now so this is how it will look like just take just refresh this in the tables in the sales you just click on this lightning button this is what will show up theek hai radhika clear you have to always refresh this you have to click on this button theek hai okay so now uh, the next thing which i want you all to do is please quickly i'll just give you 5 to 10 minutes create the customers items and companies i'll give you a hint please listen to this please listen to this all of you before moving ahead one important uh, constraint which we can use is auto increment auto increment so what is auto increment in my purchase number for example i am inputting certain inserting certain values so i know after purchase number 1 there will be purchase number 2 3 4 i don't have to always type in the purchase number what i want is i just have to type the date of purchase customer id item code and the purchase number should automatically be taken by the sql so for that you write this auto increment automatically it will increment the value by 1 okay this is something which you can add over here so what we can do is <clears throat> you cannot this is this is something which is very interesting you cannot just run this code it will give you an error because you already have created a table you cannot just go back change the query and run it because this table already exists you cannot write create table sales just go back edit and it, you can run so for that we'll be learning another set of codes but before that what you can do is for now let's delete this table let's delete this table and let's try to uh, create another uh, the table again so drop table like we did for drop database so similarly we have drop table sales and execute this now you can see the sales table has gone execute this create table again create table sales again and we'll be having just refresh it keep on refreshing it and we have the sales again right so this is what we'll have to do no not again no hmm All right. Now, what I want you all to do is to create these three tables. Just, just quick hint in the customers table. So your customer ID will be what type of data? Integer. 
not null and this is a primary key you can also put auto increment over here for first name last name both of these can be varchar and you can have maybe 250 or 55 whatever values you want uh email is again what varchar you can have maybe again 255 values number of complaints is integer just leave it like that for item table <coughs> for item table it will be what item code, item code will be foreign key nahi primary key is there but what data type i am getting an error divanshi you have to share the screenshot of your entire screen uh, in the group item code can be varchar theek hai what else what else we can put for item item table i think varchar is fine theek hai and primary key item again varchar unit price price integer or it's better because you can have it in decimals right so integer will not take decimal values so another data type which we use is numeric double or numeric we write numeric right <coughs> and when you write numeric in brackets so for example here we wrote varchar 255 in brackets varchar 10 numeric you give the numbers and you also give the decimal numbers so maybe i just wanted to two decimals so you can write 10 comma 2 Hundred comma two, whatever. Numeric in brackets, hundred comma two. That is your company uh, unit price for company ID. It will be again varchar. Okay. For company table, company ID is varchar. Company name is varchar. Headquarters phone number. ये unique तो ठीक है. What else? Integer. Integer. Okay, it cannot have decimals. So try to create all these tables. Now, one thing, um, when you are creating a primary key, this is one way of creating a primary key. Another way is I'll just edit this particular code. I'll not run it because if I run it, I'll get an error because the table already exists. So instead of right creating the primary key in this way, I can also put it over here. I can write primary. key and in brackets i can write purchase number okay nahi you will get an error ha because that's the primary key is unique for a table this is one table this is one table no hmm नहीं इन वन नहीं यहाँ पे पेरेंट टेबल का कॉन्सेप्ट नहीं है सो इफ दिस कस्टमर्स इज अ टेबल आई कैन हैव कस्टमर आईडी एज माय फॉर प्राइमरी की दिस इज वन प्राइमरी की इन वन टेबल इसका रिलेशन इससे नहीं है अभी देर इज नो रिलेशन नहीं यू सेल्स यू जस्ट पास इट वंस एंड देन यू जस्ट क्रिएट ऑल द टेबल्स यू डोंट हैव टू अगेन एंड अगेन राइट यू सेल्स Hmm. Click a screenshot of this if you all want. We'll do that. A beginning. Foreign, foreign key. I'll, I'll teach you foreign key. First, create all the tables. <coughs> First, create all the tables. Divyanshi, have you given a um, comma over here? You have Divyanshi. What you have done? You have given a semicolon over here. 
how can you give a semicolon over here this entire thing is one code so don't give a semicolon over here got it divanshi चलो कंप्लीट दिस यू फर्स्ट कंप्लीट राइटिंग योर कोड देन द रेड क्रॉस विल गो अवे यू जनरली गेट अ रेड क्रॉस वंस यू ओपन दिस ब्रैकेट एंड यू डू नॉट क्लोज इट अंटिल यू क्लोज इट एंड पास अ सेमी कोलन यू विल गेट दैट रेड क्रॉस दैट रेड क्रॉस शोज दैट समवे और दी अदर यू आर मेकिंग अ एरो इन योर क्वेरी All right. So I will be creating all the other tables. Let's create um, the next one was customers table. Okay. Customers. So here we have customer ID. Customer ID. This is in Tijo. Not null. Database, you just make it once, and then you create all the tables within the database. Database is already there. Why will we have to create it again and again, huh? Okay, and you just once you just have to pass use sales, and you just use uh, it again and again. You don't have to pass use sales again. Uh, we can also put auto increment over here. I can just simply go back and copy. and this is also a primary key next we have last name first name so first name varchar 255 i'm just giving a number make sure you write your codes very nicely give all the commas and everything table name also should not have spaces table name there is a common naming convention in across all the softwares we do not give spaces in the names that's a common convention okay we have email address email address again let me just take varchar <coughs> and number of complaints okay number of complaints is integer clear hmm so we have executed this nicely next we have what items in the items yes it can it will count spaces varchar will count spaces as well in the items we have item code so item code will be what item code will be what integer integer nahi item code hai so code can be letter as well so varchar let me 255 hmm Make sure you remove the auto increment. हाँ बोलो. हाँ good point. Since we already have created very good point. Since we have already created item code over here, so try to keep the um constraints same. So here, if the data type for item Code is varchar ten. Then you can you should write varchar ten over here. 
because it's the same item code that we're talking about right similarly here we have customer id so in the customer id i had written integer so that is why i have written here for my customer id integer so make sure your data type is same for all the tables all right okay so now here we have the first name we have last name oh uh, sorry these things are not there in items table we have item so item will be what ha huh, okay and here we can write 255 what else we have unit price unit price will be what numeric so make sure please see numeric uh let me write 10 comma 2 because i know it will not be more than this depends again and then we have the company id company id is again company id is again varchar okay i have set the primary key as well now let's run this so i have the items just just refresh over here and you see you have items you have customers and you have sales and lastly i need the companies table if you have any uh, doubt or if you're getting any error post it in the group please ha huh? maybe you haven't given the comma or maybe the semicolon is missing in the previous code or maybe just share the screenshot of it in the group okay i'll just check and i'll tell you nahi so in the companies we have company id company id company id is what bar char let's keep 255 and let's keep it as primary key okay again not null again someone said that since it's primary key why should we keep uh, not null you can avoid writing not null as well because if it's a primary key it cannot have a null value um then we have company name if you all are facing any issue i already have shared the code files with you all so you can use this particular code file and you can take the codes from there as well company name company name will be what company name will be varchar then we have headquarters phone number okay okay headquarters number this will be again integer okay i have created all the four tables अब अश्विन इज इट फाइन नाउ इट्स रनिंग इट्स वर्किंग वॉट वॉज एरो ओ आफ्टर द लास्ट वन वाय अभी ठीक you can take any number to shoot depends on you you can take anything for varchar um 
this is the maximum number 255 you can take but anyways you can take any number all right okay it depends on what you want from your database and your tables now after you have executed all the codes let's let's pass this particular code one thing a uh, one very interesting thing which i want to show you all for example i had written everything in one uh, line like this okay i'm not getting any kind of error over here any red symbol so me that means that it's executable but how to beautify this you can just click on this brush and it will beautify your code you can just write it in one line and you can just click on this brush it will beautify your code this is how it should look like okay so that's a very interesting feature of mysql but anyways when you type everything you get into habit of typing it in next line and in, see also what they have done they have given a space indentation this is called as indentation which was missing in my code so i can just select this and click on this so it will automatically give this indentation sh which means that after uh, this entire thing falls into one bracket it becomes more unreadable right see it becomes readable all right so after this let's quickly uh, show tables so what all tables i have these four tables in my sales database all right now we haven't yet created the foreign key so let's understand how to create foreign key no you have to write int is not it's not same you cannot write integer okay there are two ways of doing this i'll explain both of it to you uh the first way of creating a foreign key is you can just straight away write in this particular table in the company table do we have a foreign key no in the let's take the items table so in the items table in the items table we have a foreign key right this foreign key is company id which is related to the company table so first you'll have to create the company table then only you can create the foreign key this you have to keep in mind so there are two ways of doing this the first way of creating a foreign key is in this table directly you can type foreign key and just like we did for the primary key in bracket we wrote the table name here a column name here uh, we'll write the column name company first please see and then you all can do company id then you also have to tell as to what table this is related to so we'll write references references companies this is the table it's related to companies and in the companies which column it's related to company id because it might so happen generally this is not a good coding practice it might so happen that the company id you've written over here and the company id that you have written over here it may be a little bit different for example here i have written company and here i have written company id full so you can have different column names but the values that you have within the column should be similar so that is why when you give references when you give references you have to give the table name and the column name as well company id okay another very important thing when i was explaining so here when i was explaining that if i delete if i delete any customer from here for example i have removed customer number 10 so all the sales which were made by customer number 10 should also be deleted in from the sales column by default i have deleted it from the customer table but by default it should be deleted from the sales table as well so for that particular that particular thing we'll have to write on delete cascade on delete cascade this means if you delete 
any value from any customer from the customer's table cascade follow the same in the sales table is it clear no but in items or uh, this is company id this is not i have not linked these two together whatever so if for example these two table i am creating these two tables right now i am linking these two i am creating the items table and i am linking the company id i am making the company id as my foreign key and the parent table is the company table if i delete any company id from the company table all the items which, which i purchased from this particular company should be deleted from the items table because i have company id as my foreign key in the items table these two tables are related na customer customer id is not given over here do we have customers id over here where this and this sales and item this is same but the only the item code i've taken na but do i have customer id over here so then <clears throat> for example i have 10 products which i have purchased from a particular company so i have the company id from that company i have purchased 10 products so i can have it 10 times over here the same company id and that i'm selling it that com item i am selling it over here ha na so it's not same in that way customer id is not here na items that i have purchased is it's not linked to any customer so if i'm deleting any customer from here the sales will be gone why your items table will be affected in any way why your purchases will be affected ha na ha na for example you all have a uh, a particular flyer has been banned from spice jet so they will just remove their customer number why will they remove any purchases that they have made uh, i assume that item code is deleted and it will be deleted from all if item code is deleted from here if item code is deleted from here then uh, is it linked anywhere no where here ha huh. so if you delete it from here it will be deleted from sales right correct okay so only the foreign key is affected the the column which is related to two tables if you are changing that column if you are affecting that column then the two correspond the adjacent columns are always affected these are two non adjacent columns got it got it so here uh when i am writing we'll understand the, this when we'll input the values in the table as well here when i am writing foreign key Company ID references on delete cascade. Give a comma over here. So I am not running this code right now because if you references, the spelling is wrong. So when you are writing this line, please do not run this code because we already have created the table, items table. If I run this, it will give me an error. I've already created this. So what is the another way? If I've already created a table, then how can I change my existing table? The command that we put over here will be alter table. Alter table. Um, let's do it for sales now. Sales. Alter table sales. Alter table sales and add what? Add a foreign key. add a foreign key on customer id customer id references uh customer id is customer table so customers customer id on delete cascade okay references i have again made a spelling mistake okay cascade 
okay so now please see please all of you one very uh, interesting thing that i'll do so this is a sales table if i click on this i button if i click on this i button it will take me to this particular entire thing this is the back end basically if i click on the ddl ddl command so here we have all the constraints which i have created till now for my sales table which is integer not null auto increment you all can actually view all the in, um constraints this is a very important or you can say this is a very simplistic way you can understand if there is a table already existing i can just understand at what all constraints were there without just going back and seeing the code i can automatically just click on this i and i can see so here we do not have any foreign key do you see any foreign key written over here for your customers id no here we have primary key for the sales table now what you do is when you run this line when you run this query and now again just refresh and go back to your sales just go back to your sales again just click on this i and see we have a foreign key constraint added tumhara table just click on this button ha ha run this run this once you run this again just click on this i button again just click on this i button and you all can just go to the ddl and you can check theek hai this is how you understand see yahan pe constant aa gaya foreign key constant now do the same thing for the other foreign keys that we have we have one more foreign key item code over here alter table sales foreign key item foreign item code references items table items table on delete cascade run this there are there is one more foreign key in my items table so make sure you do that company id and this is linked to company table okay once i execute this code now all the foreign keys are in place you can check you can just again click on the sales go to the ddl and see we have the two foreign keys added similarly for the items table also i have the foreign key added maybe you haven't executed this alter table command i'll check just give show me the screenshot ha huh? correct correct that is why we are using alter table command ha i'll show you how to do that yes ayush you can change that i'll show you you can modify it so i'm getting one question from all of you like two three students please see <coughs> please see so for example i have created my table for example i have created my table over here please please see i have created this table over here and i forgot to put not null or maybe i forgot to put the auto increment anything in my this particular table company table i forgot to put not null constraint or maybe auto increment constraint whatever 
so how i can change that like like here we did alter table uh, used alter table command to ins uh, to add a foreign key similarly we can also alter our table to change the constraint so alter table companies so if you see the companies i haven't used any kind of not null or null um constraint so if i want that in my company name this cannot have a null value so now again i cannot go back and write not null over here and execute this because this table already exists so how will i adjust this alter table companies and i will write change column what was the column name company company's name company name kya hua bolo company name i want to change this ek bar samajh lo please i have written change column company name this is the column i want to change but how do you want to change it this is how i want to change it company name kya tha bar chart 255 not null so this is this this is the column you want to change change column company name and how do you want to change it this is how you want it to look like earlier it is just company name varcha 255 i have made it into varcha 255 along with that i have added a new constraint not null similarly you can do for auto increment you can do for null anything right correct this is the alter table command without dropping and creating the table again i am just using my alter table command alter table you if you want to add any column right if you want to change any column this is how you can do it ha kar lo karna hai to kar do no issues nahi 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 this is simple way of doing it see you can just go back to your company's table and you can check that they have added this not null constraint by default this was there if you don't add any kind of constraint by default it will be null so here not null is there earlier it wasn't there hmm Yes, Ayush. Right. So I'll just show you all. Chalo, since we have asked this last thing, and then um, we'll wrap this particular thing up. So, um, for example, <clears throat> I want to add another. column let's say suppose gender column in my customers table now gender can be can take only two values male female all right so for that we call it as boolean when it takes only two values in any coding software we call it as boolean okay for that i'll be using another type of data which is enum so don't get confused it's very simple just write alter table which table do i want to alter customers and i want to add it's very simple i want to add a column so add column what is the column name do you want to add gender gender right and what is the data type enum okay enum is just the data type like you have varchar you have char you have int int similarly and you have date similarly you have enum which can only take two values and you have to specify the two values m comma f what all two values it can take a e n u m yeah i'll share all the data types with you all generally we deal with these basic ones always uh, and generally what happens when you are 
you know making a database for a company the company will tell you what type of and you can actually visualize now what type of data you have and accordingly you will make it so enum and uh, you also have to write where you want to put this column anywhere they cannot put it so maybe you want to put it after the uh, last name so you can write after it's very simple just see the sql codes that we are writing create table change table alter table right add column so it's very simple delete drop it's very simple the only place where we face issue is that when we are writing any particular code we you know generally make a mistake in this these semicolons comma and all these things right so m why they are not taking this m okay obviously you'll have to put it in codes because it's a single code because obviously it's a character now so you have to put it in otherwise it will not identify just writing m and f you have to put it in single quotes so if you consider created a program you cannot alter anything nahi no, you cannot go back now you've created the structure if you have created the structure you cannot go no no you cannot go back and change nothing you have to drop the table and then again create it and that is something which we it's not a good practice obviously suppose you do not have the create table wala command with you someone else has done it for you then how uh, will you change it you'll have to use the alter table and once i pass it just um refresh this and in the this was my customers now click on the customers i and go to the ddl you'll have this gender check it by default it's taken as null kya nahi hua यहाँ पे सिंगल कोच दिया था ओके इफ यू फेस एनी इशू प्लीज जस्ट पुट इट इन द ग्रुप स्क्रीनशॉट लेके डालो एक बार छोड़ो ओके what uh, so every time what i'm doing is i'm clicking on this i button you can also write describe customers okay describe customers and just run this just run this and it will describe the entire thing for you so please see we have the fields so we have different fields over here we have the type data type is it null yes no what is the primary key what is by default value by default they have put uh all it all all the so what is this default this default is the default value which we can have for example um let's do for let's do it for the customers table only by default the number of co complaints should be zero so if if the customer does not have any complaint by default it should take a value zero so how to put this now quickly please see it's very simple in the customers table only in the customers table only here you can just write default zero default zero which means that by default the number of complaints the value will be zero so jeet please share it in the group ha har kavil tell me ek second hmm you have you you have to uh, you have to pass the use sales command jo humne starting mein kara tha ha hmm you have to drop it yahan pe dikha raha hoga na nahi यहाँ पे पर दिखा रहा होगा ना टेबल्स में शो टेबल्स शो टेबल्स पास करो हाँ नहीं दिस विल बी नॉट एक्सेप्टेड वील हैव टू अगेन चेंज कॉलम करके आई हैव जस्ट शोन यू ओवर हेयर आई हैव जस्ट शोन यू ओवर हेयर इफ यू पास दिस कोड यू विल गेट एन एरो बिकॉज वी ऑलरेडी हैव द आइटम्स टेबल यू हैव टू पास दिस चेंज ऑल्टर टेबल एंड दिस चेंज कॉलम वाला ठीक है ऑल्टर टेबल कंपनी चेंज कॉलम 
कस्टमर कंप्लेन्स कस्टमर कंप्लेन्स एंड डिफॉल्ट वाला चीज ठीक है हाँ टेल मी किसी को डाउट है टर्न एक सेकेंड ऑल्टर टेबल यू हैव टू राइट ऑल्टर टेबल कस्टमर्स सुरजीत आपने खाली ऑल्टर कस्टमर्स किया है प्लीज रीड द कोर प्रॉपरली कस्टमर्स लिखियो एंड टेबल तुम्हारा कस्टमर बना हुआ है टेबल देखो कस्टमर लिखना पड़ेगा ट्राई टू रीड द एरर्स विच यू आर गेटिंग ओवर हेयर इट शोज दैट कस्टमर टेबल सेल्स कस्टमर डज नॉट एग्जिस्ट तो मतलब कुछ गलती हुआ होगा उधर क्लियर इज इट क्लियर हाँ एक सेकेंड इसको मैं एडजस्ट uh, कर सकती हूँ डिलीट वाले को हाँ बोलो हम्म क्या नहीं एक्सेस कर पा रहे जस्ट ओपन द वर्क बेंच वो डिलीट नहीं हुआ होगा तो डिलीट हो गया मेरा फाइल डाउनलोड कर लो नो इशू आई हैव शेयर इट विथ यू ग्रुप में सेम कोड्स है लास्ट थिंग प्लीज लास्ट थिंग एंड देन वील एंड दिस how to insert a row in your table you have created the table you have created the structure right so very simple insert insert karna to insert and where do you want to insert it insert into let's say suppose i am inserting it into sales theek hai insert into sales and in bracket you have to give all the column names jahan pe you have to insert So I'll write purchase number. Let me just quickly go up and copy the column names. Okay. You don't need the constraints. Insert into sales. values that you want to insert values that you want to insert and in bracket you give all the values so my date my um purchase number let me give it as 100 um then after this date of purchase should be in quotes so let me double quotes you can also write single single do aaj ka date kya hai ट्वेंटी बाई डिफॉल्ट दे यूज योर मंथ एंड डेट वाला फॉर्मैट सो योर मंथ जीरो वन ट्वेंटी सेवन ओके कस्टमर आई डी लेट मी जस्ट पुट इट एज वन एंड आइटम कोड लेट मी जस्ट पुट इट एज क्या आइटम कोड देना है कुछ भी दे देते वार चार लिया था ना हमने सो यू कैन पुट मेक श्योर ऑल द स्ट्रिंग्स और ऑल द डेट स्ट्रिंग्स शुड बी इन सिंगल कोट्स योर नंबर्स इन टीचर्स कैन बी इन जस्ट विदाउट द कोट्स नाउ ह्योर इंसर्ट इन टू सेल्स यू पास ऑल द कॉलम नेम्स एंड देन वैल्यूज वॉट वैल्यूज यू वॉन्ट टू गिव एंड मेक श्योर योर ऑर्डर इज करेक्ट इफ यू चेंज द ऑर्डर इट विल नॉट वर्क means that if you have purchase number over here you have you should have a purchase number over here if it is date of purchase then likewise okay so i'll just make it one ha huh? kya hai cannot add i've just written one over here item 1 cannot add okay we are getting a error over here can anyone tell me why are we getting the error there is a problem with i customer id i am creating a customer id one over here i am writing this customer id one but actually there is no such customer in my customers table till yet i am writing 
custom ID one over here, but we actually do not have a customer ID till yet. So obviously, if you don't have a customer ID one, how can the person come and make a sale? That is why the error is cannot add or update a child row. What is the child row over here? Child row is the customer ID. Okay. So no problem. What we'll do is we'll leave it over here. We can insert any value in the customers table. So try inserting a value in the customers table. Let's do this same thing for the customers table. Quickly, what all columns do you have in the customers table? See one more thing. It's not always mandatory to write all the um, column names. You can do without the column names as well. No, you don't have to manually write Sujit. I'll show you in the next class. You don't have to manually write it always. So here I'm not passing the, you can do without this as well. And here in the values, I've written customers. In the values, customer ID, I'm writing one. First name, let me just write any first name. Last name. Email address. Huh? Correct. We added a gender as well. So, single quote. Always. Shivangi at the rate gmail.com. And we have number of constraints. Let me just write zero for the time being. Right, let me run this now. Let's see if it works. So yes, it's working. Why, see, I did not pass the column headings. When you do not pass the column headings, by default, it will take all the columns and you have to put in the values as per the columns only. If you're passing the column names, then it will be, and when you're passing the column name, you can skip any one particular column as well. Right, this is also, this also can happen when you're passing the column names, for example, I do not want to put the date of purchase. You can skip that date of purchase. But if it has a not null cons constraint, you cannot do that. If it, it only if it has a null constraint, you can do that. Okay. So here I did not pass any column names. Still, I'm getting the output. Now, how to how to visualize this? For that, you have select star. We'll talk about the select code in my next class uh, in details. Select star just one second Sujit whatever doubt is there please put it in the chat box select star okay tum lo please apna disconnect kar do ek baar just pin the screen just two minutes and then I'll wrap it up select star and you give the table so you write from customers I'm still star means all select all or everything from customers and see you have the value customer id name first name last name gender and everything is there kiska default zero this is something which i passed uh, but idhar do not run this otherwise you'll get an error you can do this by using alter table. Ha, alter table karke maine ye karaya tha. Ye sara. Chik hai? So if you have missed any code, no issues. You can just go back and check the file which I have uploaded. So here I have all the values. Now, now if I run the insert into sales, I will not get an error because I have the customer ID as one created. See? Still I am getting, oh. Because still uh, the item code is not there. Okay. Item code. Huh? Can you insert ID first? Insert ID and customer. Into. 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 I am getting this error again because item code I have not created now. I have to create, I have to create this item code also. If I haven't created item code, how can I make a sales from that? Got it? So you all can try, you all can make a item code. So see, they are given, they are giving a 
error for item code not customer id because customer id is not there so this is how you insert right वापस से बोलना सिलेक्ट स्टार विल गिव यू एवरी थिंग विच इज देयर इन योर टेबल वील टॉक अबाउट दिस मोर सिलेक्ट स्टार गिव ऑल द वैल्यू सिलेक्ट राइट फ्रॉम कस्टमर्स बोलो इज इट क्लियर हाउ टू सिलेक्ट सी जस्ट रन दिस एंड यू गेट द आउट no yes obviously al ha nahi but de do fir nahi ho raha to theek hai but theek hai so ji i am not able to share the screen uh let's take a break for half an hour lunch break for half an hour iska please koi photo click karke group mein bhej